So not many people know that the PlayStation 4 has been exploited many times over the years. And this is simply because these exploits are usually disclosed to Sony and then patched in a updated firmware, essentially closing the door on them before most people even realize that these exploits exist. But in reality, the PlayStation 4 has had a fairly active scene over the years, and I myself have covered PS4 security on the channel. In fact, I did a video on it last year, and I'll leave a link in the description below for those people that haven't seen it yet. And I kind of walk through the different exploit methods that were found going back from the very earliest one up until the 5.05 firmware exploit that is kind of the most standard one that was going on at the time. And that's one of the biggest issues with the PlayStation 4 scene. That is, in general, you need to be on a low firmware to take advantage of it. And for years, you know, you needed an exploitable firmware that ran on 5.05 firmware or lower which you know 5.05 is many many years old now and if you were interested in reverse engineering games that ran on a higher firmware for example then the package the game package would need to be backported to 5.05 or it simply would not work now this was something that actually happened last year with the final fantasy 7 remake demo when that came out last january in 2020 it obviously didn't run on 5.05 it was built for a high version of the firmware but it was then backported to 5.05 so a lot of people were actually running the final fantasy 7 remake demo before it was actually available if you recall and there was a big thing about it a lot of people on youtube were running the demo and most most people not everyone some people would have had test kits and dev kits and stuff but most people were most likely running on a exploitable PlayStation 4 running 5.05. Now, even with all this in mind, the PlayStation 4 scene is a small but active community of people that are working on exploits, homebrew, emulators, tools, apps, you name it. And I personally own a 5.05 exploited PlayStation 4. And honestly, I've only really kept it for one thing so I can run PT on it. And, you know, sometimes I'll check out some homebrew for it as well. But to be honest, the homebrew scene is quite small. It's definitely not as, as large as, say, the PlayStation Vita or the Nintendo Switch. However, all that is about to change because there has been a major update in the PlayStation 4 scene. And in recent days, we've seen a jailbreak for firmware 7.55, which is a significant update from the earlier 5.05 exploit. Now, at the end of last year, there was an exploit for 7.00, but that was something that took quite a lot of effort to actually get up and running as far as I know. But this 7.55 jailbreak is probably the most significant update we've had for many years. And now this means the possibility of running more updated games and tools. And I'm thinking about Lance McDonald's 60 frames per second Bloodborne patch as just one example. Now those types of things become available to us with a more modern firmware jailbreak. And this is a massive update to the PlayStation 4 scene and hopefully a shot in the arm that the PlayStation 4 scene needs in order to get more people developing homebrew and apps for the PS4. And this does mean that more people will have access to a PlayStation 4 that may be running 7.55 or lower. So how did this all come to be? Well, back in January, The Flow, who you may know from the PlayStation Vita scene and his recent release of GTA San Andreas for the Vita that we recently covered on the channel as well, disclosed a PlayStation 4 exploit for firmware 7.55 via Sony's official bounty program on HackerOne. HackerOne is essentially an area where companies basically invite security researchers to try to find exploits in their hardware, and they usually offer a bounty as a reward. And a result of this is that once the exploit has been found, the researcher will then get a bounty payment, and then most likely what happens is that particular exploit gets patched in a updated firmware, and most of the time that particular exploit is then disclosed to the public once the loop has closed on that particular firmware. So the flow's exploit was memory corruption can be achieved by sending fragmented IPv6 packets to loopback interface 
due to poor and inconsistent use of IP6 extended header check. Now, while this exploit wasn't specifically targeting PlayStation 4, it was something that could be adapted to run on a PlayStation 4, and this is where other people in the scene started to get involved. Now, security researcher Spectredev began live streaming his work to adapt this exploit and was able to do so, triggering the exploit, although he did mention that he was having difficulty controlling the exploit itself. Now, meanwhile, another researcher by the name of Slyes Govi, and I apologize if I butchered that name, also worked on applying this exploit for the PS4, and on March the 10th, had released his implementation that ran on firmware 7.5. But the scene moves fast, with a working 7.55 updated jailbreak that released on March the 15th, including support for Mira, which is essentially just a set of tools that grants controls over a jailbroken PS4, so you can do some really cool things with it overall. Now, what this means is if you are running a PlayStation 4 and you do want to take a look at a jailbroken PS4, then it's advised that you don't update your firmware to the latest, which I believe is... 8.03 but this is a really cool thing that's going on in the playstation 4 scene and it's kind of appropriate especially now that we're at the end of the playstation 4's life even though there are some more games that are coming out this year and possibly into next year you know we definitely are at the tail end of the playstation 4 so now for those people that are wondering about you know is there an exploit for 8.03? Well, right now the answer is no. Will there be one that is discovered? Maybe down, down the line, but right now I would recommend that you do not upgrade if you want to stay on 7.55. And look, I'm not going to show you how to exploit a PS4 in this particular episode. Uh, I'm going to stick with 5.05 personally, but I know a lot of people are interested in taking a look at a 7.55 jailbroken PlayStation 4. I definitely recommend you take a look at some videos out there on YouTube about how it's done. There are some steps you need to take, but it's really not that difficult to actually exploit a PS4 and then start utilizing it for homebrew and things like that. But this is a really, really big announcement. And it also just, you know, answers that question about is the PS4 exploitable? And you know, for many years I've said, well, yes, it is exploitable, but there's a lot of strings attached to it. And now with a 7.55 jailbreak, it does mean that a lot more people have the possibility of starting to look at a jailbroken PS4 than that real small subset of people that were trying to find either a 5.05 exploitable PlayStation 4 or just kept one at 5.05, you know, for all this time. But this is a really cool discovery and it's one of two PlayStation or two Sony exploits that have been found in recent times. And the other one is Tony Hacks for the PlayStation 1 that I am going to be covering on the channel as well. I've got a larger video on that one coming up as well, but I'm definitely going to be going through the entire process of how to set up Tony Hacks on a PlayStation 1. But for now, guys, we are going to leave it here. Let me know what you think about this particular news article in the comments below. And I do want to say a big thank you to Wololo.net for basically these news articles are uh, they're always on top of these things when it comes to exploits and jailbreaks and, and whatnot so shout outs to wololo for you know this really cool news updates on the playstation 4 jailbreak but for now we are going to leave it here for this episode thank you so much for watching if you liked it don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye for now